Hello? <coughs> See, no one, no one followed? Come on. Hello? 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 Okay. All right. It's like a friend. Good try. All right. Good try. Uh, area between graphs. Okay. So for this one right here, we're going to find the area in between the graphs. Uh, so we're going to have two graphs. So when we're talking about area, we're talking about integration in between the two different graphs. So for this right here, find the area between the graphs of two functions by partitioning the x axis. Okay, so basically we're, we're going to find where is the one that is actually on top and we're going to minus the one on the bottom. So the area for all this right in here would be everything of here minus this one right here. So minus that one. So minus the area underneath that. So that's how I find the area in between the two graphs. Uh, for this type of problem, I need to look to see if they do intersect, if they cross, if they if they switch, if I have a, if the F all of a sudden changes and then the G is on top later on, you know, I need to check for those things. All right, so uh, this is from A to B. So the area in between those two where sometimes it's just gonna be area between two different ones. Uh, area in between where they where they intersect together. So uh, area region enclosed by the graphs y equals f of x and y equals g of x and the lines x equals a, x equals b, where f and g are continuous on the interval from a to b, has to be continuous. Um, f is greater than g, so that means that the f is actually going to be the, the upper one. That one actually is on top of the g for all numbers in x. <coughs> and the closed interval from A to B. All right, so find the area A enclosed by the graph of F equals E to X. Uh, G of X is root X and the lines X equals zero, X equals one. Okay, so a lot of the stuff was just said right there. So let's start off with, all right, let me see, E to the X and square root of X. E to the x, what, what does e to the x look like? Okay, at zero, it's what? One, right? Yeah. Okay. So at zero, it's gonna be one. So this is my e to the x, so it's there. Okay, at one, it's e, which is like two point something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it should be like right in here. And so it should exponential like this, okay? And then right here at zero, the pink. zero, I get zero. Okay, one, I get one, right? Two, I get root two, right? Whatever that is, two, uh, right about there. So it's gonna go like this. Okay, so I have, a, I have a basic sketch of this, ju just to know what's gonna happen in between those two things. So I'm going to partition this out, ah, crap, wrong one. Uh, partition this out to be the different parts. So I'm gonna go between zero and one. So that means I'm gonna block off zero here, and I'm gonna block off one. So I'm looking from here to here, right? So I'm only looking for the area shaded in between there. So that's only this, right? Come on, work. So just that in there. So that means that which one is going to be on top? E to the X, right? E to the X, and the one on bottom is gonna be root X. So I'm basically gonna be taking the integration from zero to one and my first one is going to be e to the x, right? Minus, okay? Okay, I'm gonna actually write this in two different parts to make this a little bit easier. dx minus integration zero to one of uh, x to the one half dx. Are we okay? So, uh, integration of e to the x. So e to the x is going to give me e to the x, right? 
Okay, from zero to one, and it's minus my, this is gonna give me what? Remember, I add exponents here, right? I add, so it's gonna be three halves, right? X to the three halves over over three halves, right? Yeah. So, but this is going to be if it's over three halves, it's two, two thirds. x and two thirds, right? Two thirds. And that's going to be from zero to one. So I'm going to subtract all of that there, right? So I'm subtracting all of that. So I'm going to. Okay, so this is going to turn into e, right? That's e minus one. So e minus one, right? And then it's gonna be minus over here. So one is gonna give me two thirds and minus zero. So as I'm subtracting this, as I'm subtracting this, remember I need to distribute the negative there that's a that's one of the big mistakes a lot of people make just that simple little thing that's why I try to try to make sure I put it in with parentheses so I know that this negative has to go with both items there I don't just put it with the first I got to put it with both you know sometimes there is going to be a number not a zero there anyway so it's gonna give me what so I have a negative two-thirds here and a negative one which is gonna give me a negative Hopefully that will help right. out. Did I just befuddle everyone right now? It's five thirds, five right? Thirds, yes. Five thirds. Thank you. Negative five thirds. Wow. Okay. It's been a while. I know it's been a while, so it's going to be e to the e to the first, basically minus five thirds. And that's going to be the area in between those. Uh, that would be units square because it's not, you know, whatever whatever units it comes along with that. So what it, what is the approximation for that? So let's take a look at that calculator. So we said E, right? e to the 1, right, minus 5 over 3, and I'm going to, okay, so I get this one, now watch, go to here, go to my function, and my top one was e to the x, right? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Very good. My bottom one was root x, there you go. And let's do the integration. So that's going to be menu, analyze graph. I want bounded area. So I want between zero. So I'm going to hit zero. Enter and one, right? One, enter. There we go. So I have it right here. There it is. So shaded area right in there. Did everything for me. So 1.5, but um, to get like an AP calculus type answer, I, I have to get out of here. There we go. Okay, so I'd have to get out of here. So let's go ahead and do my, I would do the integration again. Let's take a look. So I would do menu calculus okay there it is uh, and that's from zero to one e to the x x minus Okay, 
So, there we go. There's my answer, nice and pretty. Same thing, but if you wanted to actually do that there, you could actually do it on your graph, so you could see it there, and then you could actually get your number of decimals that you need right here. Make sense? So what would I actually write for an answer? What would it be? Okay, so let's let's say that this is a uh, a question that I have to approximate. What would my answer be? One point zero five two, right? Zero five two, because you have to round off three. Remember, that's why. Uh, uh, that's why I was trying to make that point. Okay, so here's another one. I have a graph already done for you. So my delta x, you know, in between everything. All right, so find the area enclosed by the graphs of this. So this one right here, I have to try and figure out what it's gonna be, right? So if it's enclosed by the two graphs, I don't have an x bound, like a min and max for this one. That means that they're going to be enclosed. That means that they're gonna equal each other at some places. So let's take a look. So I'm gonna set them equal. So it's gonna be 10x minus x squared equals 3x minus eight. Uh, let's move everything to the right. So zero equals x squared, uh, what's that gonna give me? Minus seven x minus eight, right? Hopefully. I'm kind of winging it. I haven't finished my coffee yet, so I need you guys making sure I do basic math correctly. Okay. All right, so now can I factor that? Okay, so that's gonna factor. It's gonna be zero equals x, let's say minus eight x plus seven. No, wait, one, 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 one. There we go. I know, where's my coffee at? Okay. All right, so. Seem right? Yeah, okay. So that means that I'm gonna have two places in which that my x values are intercepting. So I have negative one, and I have positive eight. So in my graph, they're bounded from negative one to eight. So in between there, so as I write this out, it's gonna be bounded right here. There's my negative one, and here is my positive eight. Okay, I went to the graph on this one so you guys could actually see what do I need to do in between there. So now I know, okay, from looking at the graph that the f of x is gonna be on top, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I gotta try and figure out, without having a graph, so I have to think about it numerically. So what can I do in between those two points to be able to figure out where it's gonna be? If they're only touching at these two points right here, that means that there's no twist in there. It's not gonna change from F is on top to G is on top, so I'm only gonna be touching at these two points. So, I just need to find a point in between these two things and plug it in there. So zero is in between there, right? So if I plug in zero here, I get what? Zero. zero. If I plug in zero here, I get negative. negative eight. So therefore, this one has to be on top. That is the easiest thing you could try and do there, is make sure you figure out which one has to be on top. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so now that I have it figured out, so I can write my integral. So it's gonna be my integrand of, where's my bottom? Negative one. Yes, negative one. Negative. Where's the top? Eight. <laughs> and that's gonna be, uh, let's see, that's gonna be 10 x minus x squared. And do you wanna do it in two or one? You wanna do it in one? Let's do it in one. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna be subtracting the other side, right? So it's three X minus eight, right? And that's gonna be DX. So it's the first function minus the second function. 
So if you're writing it incorrect in like this. So this parentheses is really important. Okay? So on the AP exam, on the BC part, they're, they're kind of a stickler about this. If your DX is only out here, put a parentheses around all of it. They're weird like that because, I don't know, it's like, you know those grammar Nazis? Yeah. They're like yeah. They're you know exactly what it means, right? Where you're taking the integral of just 3x minus Yeah, all, all of that, where they, they would actually say, oh, it's only the you integral the last thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's Have dumb. Anyway, I know, right? So, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and... As I as I do this, I'm gonna I'm gonna combine it up. So it's gonna be negative one to eight. So I'm gonna have seven x, right? So seven x, and I'm gonna have minus x squared and plus eight. Plus eight, and there's my dx there. Let's go ahead integral this whole thing. Wait, is that just plus eight dx? <laughs> Yeah, I see what you did right there, right there. He's a spy from the Over there, right there. With their problems. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, do the math. This is going to be negative, right? Negative what? x cubed over 3 plus 7x squared over 2 and 8x from negative 1 to 8. Yes? Yeah. Alright, let's do the math. So it's uh, what, negative one third? No, yeah. Uh, let me insert so I can do the math. Page. So we had from negative x cubed over 3. 7x squared. Plus 7x squared. Alright, so, uh, what's that? 256? <laughs> 64 times 7? 32 times seven Hmm? What do we come up with? Just put a parenthesis around both that and then say unit squared. <laughs> <laughs> Will they actually take that? Yeah. But usually when they ask something like this, you have to have an actual... Hold on a minute. These are actual numbers. I know. 
They're gonna like ask you something to go along with it too. Yeah, to make sure that you can't just do that <laughs> to the nearest jester, please. <laughs> Yeah, 0.33. What did we come up with anyway? <laughs> did you guys give me the decimal? Like all the way, okay. Yeah, all the way. Anyone else? Let's go to the Six on me, you got me beat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went over. That's a bust. Right there. <coughs> wow, one twenty one point five. The yeah. math gods are nice to us sometimes. Okay, so this one was not right. between graphs 2 enclosed by y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x from the y-axis to their first point of intersection in the first quadrant. So, what are my bounds? So, yes, it's going to be this right here. <laughs> no, seriously, that's actually like important. Zero, because the, the y-axis is zero, right? Okay, so now... <laughs> Uh, where do they cross? So let's see. So sine yeah. x equals <laughs> cosine x. Uh, Got to get everything to the left hand side. Um, let's divide everything by cosine. So where is tangent? x equal 1. Pi over 4. Yep. So x arctan of 1 is x pi over 4. So we're going to get pi over 4 up here. So I was able to go through and actually find this right here, or you could think of it, when is cosine and sine the same thing? In quadrant one, if I'm thinking about the unit circle, in quadrant one, they're both the same at pi over four, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly, that's what I had thought of. Yeah, like that, that's, and and, you know. but now, now I, I showed it mathematically. Okay, all right, so we have that. So I have those values, so, and it says, the first point of intersection in the first quadrant. Okay, so I have that. So which one's gonna to be top? Cosine. Cosine. So it's gonna be cosine, right? So it's gonna be the cosine of x minus sine of x, right? Yes. And that's gonna be dx. Uh, thanks for the parentheses. Yeah. I yes, yes. 
You know what? Your sarcasm is not wasted on me. It really is because years ago, I was sitting in that same seat right there, you know, complaining about the same stupid thing. So it wasn't for AP tests. I had a college professor that got mad about that. I didn't take AP. You know what, I'm like, ah. you know what, I'm, I'm not the grammar Nazi, I don't care that much. I'm like, okay, do you, are you saying what it is? Yes. Okay, but you're not like, mm. okay. Kind of like the indeterminate form. I'm okay with the indeterminate form without actually having to write indeterminate. So, yes, you, lose, you use L'Hopital, but, you know, I, yeah, I don't care that much. Yeah, you saw it, you did it, good job. All right, um, okay, let's do the math now. All right, so derivative of cosine, or I'm sorry, integration of cosine. <laughs> Remember, it goes the other direction. Okay, here, I'll draw the wheel for you guys. So sine, cosine, negative sine, negative cosine. Okay, so this is my integration, and it goes that way, right? All right, so... That's the in integration symbol. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> wow, you like, is, see there, that? is there another sign in the movie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you saw you saw you saw that show Heroes, you know, from you know back in the two thousand. Yeah, that, that was the symbol that they used. Yeah. All right. So integration of negative sign. From zero to pi over. Four. Okay, so sine of pi over four is going to give me rad two over two. Okay. Plus rad two over two. Okay. Minus all of this, right? Sine at zero. Zero. Cosine at zero. Yeah. All right. So what are we gonna get? So we got two of those, don't we? So it's going to be 2 rad 2 over 2, which is just rad 2 minus 1. Yeah. Actually, make sure, make sure you box. Hold on, box, and you have to put a answer. Okay, units. Okay, wait, hold on. Okay. <laughs> you star it and like put sunshine. Yeah. Okay. Sunshine. How are you gonna write sunshine on it? It's got a sign. Right. Like it's a little rays coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Look what I answered. Too bad it's wrong. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. Thanks for the points. Mr. Yeah. And it gives you zero. You know. <laughs> That's wow. like me on a bad haircut. Your hair goes down <laughs> too. <laughs> She has a beard? Yeah, yeah I thought it was like, she drew like a beard with... That's, what she, that's just what she looked like. Eyebrows. Eyebrows. Alright, well that's... Oh. Some bangs. Give it a haircut. Even though it's a sound design, give it a haircut. Ew. 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 Yeah. Ew. Ew. Give it a haircut. Ew. 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 I'm feeling like... <laughs> anyway, alright, so... so wow, see, he's got like little, little feet here too. <laughs> So it's like walking oh, and a whole bunch of cute. It's kind of like a Medusa it's going on there. <laughs> that's nightmare fuel. I, have I know, right? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, that is pure horror. <laughs> it's like a tomb. Okay, partitional y axis, like I said, I'm going to save that for tomorrow. I'm going to save that for tomorrow because I, I know first day back after, you know, how long of melting your brain. All right, so don't forget, like, yeah. subscribe, hit that notification button.